everybody! My name is Jack and welcome back! Welcome back for a new Italian language lesson. Today I'm gonna present you a format invented by me. Thank you, thank you. This format it is called 10 nouns, 5 verbs and 10 adjectives. Why? Well, because Knowing the basic rules of grammar, it is cool, of course, in order to speak properly a foreign language. However, without a wide vocabulary, you won't be capable to fully master a language. And that's why I'm here. I'm gonna present to you different nouns, adjectives, and verbs. So, buckle up and let's get started. First, let's start with the nouns, because nouns describe things. Nouns are born to name physical objects and also abstract objects. So many times you only need to know the exact translation of a noun to be fully understood. The first noun I want to introduce is casa. Probably if you watched my other videos, I named this thing very often. Casa is the English house or home. Actually, in Italian, there is no distinction between the physical place you live and the four walls building your house. So home, house have the same translation, casa. Casa is feminine gender because it ends with the vowel a. La casa, the house with its definitive article. Una casa, a house with its indefinite article. Le case, the houses, plural. Casa differs from caso. Caso in Italian is not the male for casa because it means different things. The first meaning is the translation of the English case, like case scenario. So, caso o ends with the vowel o, therefore is male gender. Il caso, the case. Un caso, a case. I casi, the cases. Pro tip for genius speakers. Caso also means randomly in Italian language. It is not a noun because it transforms itself into an adjective if, if we place a before caso. A caso, in fact, means randomly. I choose randomly. Io scelgo a caso. If we play again with vowels, we obtain cosa. Cosa means thing. It is very used in Italian language because, as happens in English, thing, cosa, is the substitute of everything we do not know its exact name. Pass me that thing. Passami quella cosa. Cosa ends with the vowel a, therefore it is feminine. Obviously, la cosa, the thing. Una cosa, a thing. Le cose, the things. Plural. So we're done playing with vowels. We move on to the next noun. It is the fourth one I present to you today, and it is giorno, day. It ends with the vowel O, therefore it is male gender. Il giorno, the day. Un giorno, a day. I giorni, the days, plural. If we have giorno, day, we also have notte, night. Remember, in the middle there are two strong T's. So it is notte, notte. Notte ends with the vowel A. 
so it is irregular. But I tell you that it is feminine gendered. La notte, the night, una notte, a night, le notti, the nights. Six noun, paese, which means country. It is a little bit tricky because in the beginning you have paese, two different vowels. I, paese, it means country in the world meaning of a very huge nation like Italian country, paese, Italia, or as what well, in English can be considered countryside, in Italian we can name as paese. Paese is irregular. However, I tell you now that it is male gender because it wants male gendered articles. Il paese, the country. Un paese, a country. I paesi, the countries. Seventh noun, tempo. Tempo is the Italian translation for time. Tempo ends with the vowel O. Therefore, it is, yes, male gender. Il tempo, the time. Un tempo, a time. I tempi, the times. Now I give you the eighth noun. Is one noun but has two meanings. So, a double noun. Yeah, you're welcome. The noun is ora. Ora, it is feminine gender because it ends with the vowel a. But in Italian has two different meanings. The first meaning is the exact translation for the English now. Right now. Ora. In this case, it is a time adverb. Therefore, it is invariable. It doesn't change nor gender nor number. The second meaning is for the English hour. One hour, un ora. Two hours, due, plural, ore, because it is feminine gender. La ora, l'ora, with the elision, the hour. Una ora, un'ora, with the elision, a hour. Le ore, the hours. In this case, you have two vowels clashing together. So we must proceed to do an elision between the article and the noun. If you do not remember, just I leave here in the description link of the video about Italian elision, how it works, when it is necessary and when it is not. So after this video, please have a look. Strada, the exact translation for English street, because probably if you visit Italy, you will name or ask for a specific street or directions very often. Strada ends with the vowel A. Therefore, it is female gender. La strada, the street. Una strada, a street. Le strade, the streets. Last but not least, the tenth noun is anno. Anno with double N. It kind of stressed out the consonants. Anno. And it is the exact translation for English ear. Anno it is male gender. Yes, right, call. Therefore, it needs male gender articles. Lo anno, again with the elision, l'anno, the ear. Un anno, ah, in this case, the elision is not needed because un, the article, stays by its own, without any vowel. Un anno, a year. Gli anni, the years, plural. Part two, part two, part two e parto io. Ha! Second part of this video is five verbs. 
Actually, I picked up the most and common used verbs in Italian language. Let's start with... Yeah, of course, with the verb to be. Essere. Essere. Second conjugation. Again, I leave in the description the video lesson about Italian verbs. How they work, how the three kinds of conjunctions, patterns, work. So please have a look to know more about Italian verbs. But for now, I'm going to provide five different verbs, their meaning, and three main conjunctions pattern for the three main tenses you're gonna use often in Italian language. I mean, simple present, simple past, and simple future. So, essere is the first verb, is the exact translation of the English verb to be. First, present simple. Io sono, I am, tu sei, you are, lui, lei, è, he, she, it, is, noi siamo, we are, voi siete, you are, loro sono, they are. This was the simple presence. Now move to the simple past. Io fui, I was. Tu fosti, you were. Lui, lei, fu. He, she, it was. Noi fummo, we were. Voi foste, you were. Loro furono, they were. The third, most simple tense will be simple future. Io sarò, I will. Tu sarai, you will. Lui, lei sarà, he, she, it will. Noi saremo, we will. Voi sarete, you will. Loro saranno, they will. The second most important verb in Italian language is the verb avere the exact translation of to have by following the three main conjugation patterns for what concerns the most used and frequent tenses. Simple present, simple past, and simple future. First, simple present. Io ho, tu hai, lui, lei ha. Noi abbiamo, voi avete, loro hanno. Remember to pronounce vigorously the H before any of those persons. It is very fundamental because if you remember, in just a few minutes back, I told you anno, which is the translation for the English word year. Do not confuse anno with anno, with the H, anno, you are using the verb in the third plural person. Keep in mind this difference because it is very important in Italian language to distinguish between the two words. Then we can move to simple past. Io ebbi, tu avesti, lui, lei, ebbe, noi avemmo, voi aveste, essi ebbero. And of course we can name, we can conjugate the simple future tense for the verb to have, avere. Io avrò, tu avrai, lui, lei avrà, noi avremo, voi avrete, loro avranno. Third verb very important is the verb to say, dire. Dire, ire, ends with ire, therefore it belongs to the third conjugational pattern. Simple presence. Io dico, tu dici, lui, lei dice, Noi diciamo, voi dicete, essi dicono. Voi dicete, voi dite. Voi dite. Beware the C. It is pronounced CH in the middle of the conjugation pattern because for the first person, io dico, 
and for the third plural person dicono the c is hard dick dicono but of course we move to simple past like i said io dissi tu dicesti lui lei disse noi dicemmo voi diceste loro dissero the word to ems in dicemmo made it out clear and your are conjugating this verb into its past tense then simple future io dirò tu dirai lui lei dirà noi diremo voi direte loro diranno beware of the final accents and the end of the words so you must stress those vowels and spike up the pitch to make it out clear that the tone of the word is spiking up to the final vowel io dirò fourth verb is potere which can be translated with english to be able to or can potere second conjugation therefore the conjugation pattern will be the following simple presence io posso i can tu puoi you can lui lei può he she it can noi possiamo we can voi potete you can loro possono they can then we address the simple past io potei tu potesti lui lei poté noi potemmo voi poteste loro poterono and of course last but not least simple future io potrò tu potrai lui lei potrà noi potremo voi potreste loro potranno beware this very huge difference between the past potemmo and the future potremo maybe for noobs difference can be subtle but it is important because noi potemmo can be translated with english we could but is very different from potremo we only want am we will can we will be capable of moving on to the verb volere to want it is very important because often if you visit italy you want to express the need of wanting something and knowing this verb will save your ass so many times you're welcome io voglio i want tu vuoi you want lui lei vuole he she it wants noi vogliamo we want voi volete you want loro vogliono they want again we now analyze the past the simple past tense io volli tu volesti lui lei volle noi volemmo voi voleste loro vollero and last simple future io vorrò tu vorrai lui lei vorrà noi vorremo voi vorrete loro vorranno now welcome to the third part of this video kudos for you if you're still alive and awake after all of that stuff i will list the 10 most used adjectives in italian language starting from questo this questi plural these referring to many things questo it is singular questi it is plural it works like in english but remember italian has genders so you need to morph those demonstrative adjectives into questa feminine singular and queste feminine plural then i can list another set of two demonstrative adjectives quello that quelli those again we must morph into their feminine versions if we are addressing feminine gender things like quelle for female plural and 
quella for female singular. Another common adjective is più, which means more. Against più there's meno, which means less. Another important adjective is tutto. Tutto means everything. It changes gender and number. Tutto in general is male gender, but if I have to address a feminine thing, I must turn into tutta. And tutti and tutte are still valid in Italian language to refer to plural things. Then of course we must name possessive adjectives. Suo, his, sua, hers, but also in Italian we must list the plural versions. Suoi is still his, but plural. Sue, hers, but plural. Another important adjective is mio, which means mine. It is another possessive adjective, but it refers to ourselves. Mio, because I am male. If I was a female, I should have used mia, the female version. While miei, whoa, that's complicated. But miei, it is the plural version for both mio and mia. Last but not least, I list. Oh, it sounds good. Uh, but whatever. Uh, I list two interrogative adjectives. Quale, which I leave in the description, link about the Italian lesson about how to formulate questions. Please check it out after you finish this video. But going back in topic, quale, it is the exact translation of English which, which one. Good news, it refers for both female and male gender. But bad news, it has plural. Quale for singular, quali for plural. Ladies and gentlemen, class is dismissed. Remember to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, give it a like. Uh, but most importantly, stay tuned for more content coming next weeks. And I forgot, the most important thing is remember, speak like a genius. Bye bye.